our community, our hometown. This is Carney Live, presented by 102.7 FM and KMO TV. Carney Live is a close up look at the people, places, and events that matter to you. And now, here are the hosts of Carney Live, Mike Davis and Jim Dickerson. Yep, there it is. That's the live studio audience. <laughs> Welcome to Carney Live. We are so happy you've joined us this morning. I'm your host, Mike Davis, along with my friend and co-host, Jim Dickerson, right here. Yep. The man is here live and in person. That's Jim right there. You all know him. And then the man, the guy that's producing this show, the man, the truly the man, Mr. Brian Watts. Yes. Oh, yes. Thank you. Yes, voted the sexiest man in Carney. We know that. It was by unanimous vote. Uh -huh. That's right. Oh, easy, good, good ladies. Thing both, easy. Good. He's married. Good He's thing married. both those people showed yep. up that day to vote. <laughs> oh, wow. It was me and Jim. <laughs> thanks, guys. We, we find you quite attractive. Yeah, well, thanks. Yes, I appreciate yes, that. Yes. I'm not embarrassed. <laughs> no, I'm not either. I'm very comfortable saying so. Look at that guy. Look at that, Brian. Look okay, at that guy. Is, yeah. Right? Yeah. Thanks. Look at that. There you go. Well, we're glad you're here, Brian, because well, we, couldn't, we couldn't do this without you. I know. <laughs> <laughs> we could, but it just wouldn't be on the air. You know, it'd be a kind of a waste of time, which, you know, I don't know, I'm, I'm apt to do at times. Right. So, All right, Jim, you have a couple of things to talk about. And then, uh, real quickly, I want to say that we have Shani Othick. She's the executive director. <laughs> I don't, you know... A heck of a crowd we got yeah, here, guys. And it, Very it's, enthusiastic. It's, yes, thank you for being with us, and Shaney. As soon as we move over into our new studio, which I'm told is going to be soon, Did within the next that? six to months Nine, to years. Yes. Yes. Say, <laughs> yes. Every time we get ready to go over there or we get ready to do something, someone goes, "Oh, we're still waiting for a part." <laughs> right. So I, I was informed today no. there's huge wall panels that I didn't even know were coming, are not here yet. Nope. Did you they're, know about they're the wall not here panels? Yet. Well, yeah, well, there's other things that needed to be determined before we did that. <laughs> All right, well, let's not get into that too much. But, uh, Jim, uh, before we get back to Shaney, I know you wanted to make an announcement about something going on here in Kearney. Well, it wasn't so much an announcement. Well, then what was it exactly? I'm, I'm told by our producer that I'm supposed to talk about numerous local things. Do you so. do everything he says? I do, um, because he <laughs> signs my check. But uh, I noticed that. I digress. Uh, first of all, I'm proud to announce that I filled up my tank today for $22.37. What? Nice. No that way. happened. It's my lawnmower. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I fell for that. <laughs> Nicely done. Thank you very much. Uh, the other thing was, uh, if you get a chance, swing over to Fat Boys for their happy hours. Uh, we've got a promotion going with them. If you have any questions about that, go to our website. And those start at 2, 3. Uh, Come three on. to, three for, to six, if for, I'm not mistaken. For me, it's right. two. I get there early. <laughs> Come by and join Maybe me that's that. why you can't remember yeah, what time it's Exactly. Part, <laughs> yep. part of the problem. Yep. Thanks for identifying that. Every, every uh, hour is a happy hour. <laughs> and uh, so that's over at Fat Boys. If you have any questions or uh, about that, well, there's information on our website or our Facebook page. You can look at that there. The other thing is, if you're making plans for this summer, make sure you check out the amphitheater schedule that's coming up. They've got some good shows all through the year. There it is, part of it on the website. For those of you watching on KMO TV, you can see it on the screen. If you're listening to it on the radio, please don't look at your screen and your radio in your car because you'll <laughs> crash, and then you won't see the information. But they've got some good bands. One of the ones we were talking about before we went on the air, Shooting Star, is going to be out there in July. Looking forward to that, even though I'll be at another <laughs> event in another state that day. But, you know, and I was going to call Randy, the mayor, and say, you know, can we move that date? But he won't. Yeah, I'll won't, try it. He you won't answer know. my call when I'm talking about that. But anyway, the amphitheater's <laughs> doing that. And then, I don't know if you saw it, they're doing um, a, a huge uh, renovation project over at the firehouse. Mm -hmm. Did you How see about that? that? I was just there the other yeah, day. It's looking so, good. Yeah. Um, they, That's exciting. They are tearing it up over there. I'll tell you what. In a literal sense. Yeah. <laughs> and, and in a figurative sense. Yes. But, yeah, all the work they've done, they had the 
the improvements and the van and all that. And now we're doing a new building and all that. So very, very Kurt Hamilton cool. over there. Good job with that. And with more of what's going on to Carney, we're going to go back to Mike Davis and he's going to introduce us and talk to us about something that's coming up over um, with horses and whatnot. <laughs> I wish we had some horse noises, some, some special effects, Brian. There's go ahead, Jim. Nothing, Can you do that? <laughs> nothing. No horse <laughs> no, hoofs or remember the cloppity clop? Yeah, you know, and, no. Yeah, no, and, no. Uh, we don't, Randy doesn't allow horses in the studio. Interesting. So. What? So, <laughs> there, I'll have to oh, talk to him about is. that. Uh, that's what I'm looking for yes, right there. That sounds good. In. See, they're all coming in. Well, Shani Othic, yes, and thanks so much for being with us, Shani. You're thanks with the Northland me. Therapeutic Riding Center, and uh, you are here to promote a couple of events. And uh, how about jumping right in and tell us all about them? You bet. So I am Shani Othic. I'm with Northland Therapeutic Riding Center, which is just in Holt, right on the Kearney Holt border. So we're really not that far out so this weekend we are holding our second annual mayfair which is a free family event for the entire community great family friendly things that are going on there we are we have a little map here that you guys can use when they come <laughs> out and we also have a passport so we're going to have over 30 vendors selling crafts um gear, all kinds of things. We are also going to have a booth and we're also going to have our Equisizer. And Equisizer is something that you may, if you watch the Kentucky Derby, you may have seen some of the jockeys practicing on that. It is kind of a pretend horse that gives you the actual feel of a horse without being on one. So we're going to have that out for the public to try. The one I have has a Great stick talk. on it. We yes, have it. that too. We have that too. You're welcome to check it out. Um, this is going to run Saturday from 10 in the morning until 4 p.m. This is a rain or shine event. And last I checked the weather, there was only a 30% chance of rain in the morning. So hopefully it kind of goes right over us and gives us a beautiful day. And it's not going to be scorching no, hot. It's, it's yes. only like 82 degrees. Perfect. Um, this event came about actually during COVID. I am a quilter and some of my quilter friends donated some quilts and said, you ought to sell these for like, you know, raffle tickets. And I said, no, we have a beautiful farm that so many people in Kearney just have no idea that we even exist. Very cool. I and didn't so know that. And so we yeah. said, let's have an event. It's free. It yes. allows everybody to come out and see what we do. And, and so we are offering um, classes will be going on during that time. So people can check out a class from 1030 to 1130 and 1130 to 1230. We have a kids' activity area that is sponsored by Central Bank of Missouri and Mr. Delph's Foods here in Kearney. And they'll have free face painting, um, a craft, and free inflatables. We're going to have my favorite, which is the Godo booth. I saw that in and there. You can tell get me pictures. about that. Well, so that's Bert and Ernie. I got oh, okay. Bert and Ernie. Oh, yeah. They're my two twin goats that I got during COVID. Yes. And they like to have their picture taken with people. <laughs> so we, we're going to have a backdrop. Um, that you guys can get pictures taken with. It's a blast. Go you to have booth. to try it. Yes. You can't. No, don't knock it till you try it. They'll be, oh, uh, yeah, be immortalized with your many horses and goats. And the many is the M I N I. So you have some of those little those little horses. We have over two there. miniature horses, yeah. Pete and Snickers. <laughs> and they are our little mascots. If you went to Legends Festival um, downtown, Carney, then you saw them there. I remember October promoting Fest. those two weren't, guys. Weren't yeah. you with Snickers for a while, Brian? No. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you did something with Snickers, or you talked so. about him or something. Oh, we've talked about him oh, a lot. Oh, I know so. what it was. Yeah. We were doing the news, and you couldn't get through the story because you kept talking about <laughs> Snickers. <and you> kept <laughs> I remember that now. Okay. Yep. Um, so some of the other things we'll have, too, is we'll have a food truck there, Weenies and Paninis. What a great name, right? Nice. Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Jim, no comment. <laughs> right. Um, if you're concerned about... Um, Maybe you're not as mobile as everybody else. We do have golf carts that can pick people up from their cars and drop them off at different stations. We do have public restrooms. I'm um, all about the golf okay. cart. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so this is – go ahead, Jim. Well, I was going to say you said there's – what kind of lessons are you talking about? So what we do is we are a nonprofit therapeutic horseback riding center for people with special needs. And so we provide 85 to 90 lessons a week to riders there at the center. And so Saturdays, we typically have classes from 8.30 to 12.30. And it's hard for people to understand what we do without coming and seeing what mm -hmm. we do, in my opinion. 
So I really wanted the community to be able to come out and watch a lesson in action. Very cool. Now, and this is Saturday. That's this Saturday. Yes, this, uh, this Saturday. upcoming Saturday, mm -hmm. May the 14th, mm -hmm. 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. And you've got, uh, I mean, as you've said, uh, the here on the website it says 20 vendors, but I thought maybe you, you said there was more. 30. Than, yeah, There's now you're up to 30. 30. Yeah. Uh, but uh, there are there room for other vendors at this point, or are you filled no. up? You're no. filled up. I made this, well, Kurt Hamilton at the Firehouse, because <laughs> we all work together as nonprofits. We're all good yes. friends, and we share with each other. But he helped me create this. He made the map, basically. Kurt is the most popular man in Carnegie. I love Kurt. It used to be Brian. I, you said oh. Brian. I no. love Kurt. He's yes. my buddy. Yes. Well. So, yes, we are accepting no more vendors, um, unfortunately. But there's always next year. Right. And uh, the, the Goto Booth food <laughs> raffles. Now, tell us about the raffles. So, the raffles... As I said, this started with quilts that were donated, and so that still continues. I made three quilts that are in it. We have other ladies, volunteers, spouses of volunteers, and just general friends of the center that have donated some beautiful, beautiful pieces that you can win in this raffle. But Very also, cool. each vendor donates something that they make oh, I see. Um, that goes in that raffle as well. So there's some really great items. We also donate a goat picnic. Oh, I thought you were going to say it. <laughs> no, my goats are not. I got a little nervous. Look what I won. Right? Okay. Um, and then the next thing you see, he's got an apple yeah, in his well, mouth. That's, that's oh. different than winning a goldfish, isn't and, it? And <laughs> Brian will like this. And we're raffling off a party with uh, Pete and Snickers. Nice. Hey, now. Nice. It's yeah. just uh, like one one person with Pete and Snickers. Yeah. I was just yeah, well, what what what? No, not what very exactly, good conversational. <laughs> what is that? Go <laughs> what exactly it's, is so a party with Pete and? Or, they get to come out and groom them, braid their hair, <laughs> so just hang out they get with to come them. Out and work. <laughs> well, yes, exactly. Okay. But a lot gotcha. of people find that very therapeutic, Brian. Gotcha. You should try oh, it. Oh, that's funny. Another fun thing is Bees Flowers is our flower yes. power sponsor. And so right when you come to our welcome uh, booth and get your map, you go straight to their booth and you get a really cute flower crown. They're How giving away those that? for free. And then yeah. they have other items for sale there as well. Very cool. And uh, as you said, you're up in Holt. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, the address is at... Uh, 13608 Henson Road. Uh, Holt, Missouri. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, how hard is it to find the place, actually? It's really not that See, hard. And we are going to have signs out. I have signs advertising the fair out right now, but I'm going to put directional signs there out you go. Friday evening. So. Uh, so nobody has to do anything in advance. You can just show up for this okay. thing on Saturday morning at 10. I will say that if anybody is dying to give service to their community this weekend, I need help with parking. <laughs> oh, All you do is okay. sit in a lawn chair and go like this. Point. Because <laughs> yes. we have a very long driveway. So, so you can work on your tan, sit in the lawn chair. Brian might no be drinking beer, in but that, but he 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 would want to wear the the flower. flower. That's okay. <laughs> oh, is that right? Yes, yeah, you I could can that. wear the flower wreath. It's fine. I'm sure Shannon wouldn't mind. <laughs> if one I get you a bed. flower wreath, Brian, will you go help park cars? Only if you will. Oh, hey, I've, you should. It's a team effort. <laughs> it, well, yes. Yeah. We've got some of the Road Degree <laughs> Club coming out to help. So yes. very so cool. We we do need more help though. Always. Um, well, that sounds fun, and yeah. uh, I, I would say that it is uh, probably worth getting up there and uh, spending at least the morning. And, Absolutely. Uh, and certainly, if, if you if you want to make it up there around noon, you got a whole other four hours to spend up there on, in a in a very very beautiful location, no mm -hmm. doubt about it. And you get to see the horses, and the goats, and uh, the tiny horses, <laughs> Pete and Snickers, <laughs> yeah, which you like. <laughs> Uh, did you want to mention real quickly, there was another event. That yes, you, you so were, yes, pretty closely after, on June 25th, we are having our fifth annual Aim for Abilities Trap Shoot, and that is held out at KCTA in Smithville. Popular event, easy event. Um, we are accepting uh, teams of five or individuals mm -hmm. that we can pair together. It's two rounds of 25 shots. An adult is $80. A youth is $45. That includes lunch, which is sponsored by Platte Clay Electric. Mm -hmm. That includes a shirt. If you register by June 10th, um, you have to bring your own gun and your own ammo. But it is such a fun event. Everybody has a blast. We also have a silent oh, auction at there. that time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't even mean to be so punny. Um, 
just it, it, it's a great event. It's yes. a solid event. It started with us needing an indoor bathroom, and we raised ten thousand dollars our first year. No kidding. And we continue to just grow stronger and stronger. I'd like to see these guys out here get involved. Well, you know, have to put uh, a bug in their ear. Well, there are some very good uh, trap shooters at the high school. Yes, as, as, yeah. if I'm not yes. mistaken. Yes, and they've some, been involved as well before. Yeah, state champions, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah. Um, registration for that opens on May sixteenth, and. I am still accepting sponsors. I need sponsors to do stations, to do uh, range fees, prizes, and youth teams. So Very please cool. feel free to contact me if anyone is interested. Yeah, so that so you're saying the uh, it opens up for uh, all of the participants on the 16th, right? Correct, okay. for everybody to register right. online. That's mm -hmm. Monday, right? Correct. I had to get through Mayfair first. My goodness, yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> I just had to get through one event yeah, before I started the next one. All right. Very good. Yeah. Well, thanks so much, Shani. Thank you, guys. We, we appreciate you for all that you do, uh, certainly with uh, the Northland Therapeutic Riding Center. And uh, we see you around at Kearney events and all the, all the time. So you're, yeah. you're very involved in the community. We appreciate that. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. Stay tuned with us. We are going to have Corporal Andrew Frizzell and Deputy Caleb Nelson from the Clay County Sheriff's Office. Yes, we are. Stay with us. We'll be right back with Kearney Live. Programming heard on KPGZ is being underwritten and supported by these local businesses. Simplify your banking, simplify your life. It's easy with Kearney Trust Company. Kearney Trust goes beyond convenient locations and good customer care to offer banking services that make managing your finances quicker and easier than ever before. Online, bill pay, e-statements, and mobile banking are available to give you a positive banking experience so you can get back to your life and activities. Kearney Trust also provides capital to people and businesses so they can achieve their goals. Whether you know exactly what you want or just need someone to talk to about your dream, you can speak with them and work on that dream. Kearney Trust Company is your partner for success with two convenient locations in Kearney at 310 West 92 Highway and 701 Watson Drive in Price Chopper. The phone is 816-628-6666. Kearney Trust Company, banking you can trust. Member FDIC. Electric cooperatives are different. We have a sense of pride in our local community and support the people who live here. That's why Platte Clay Electric Cooperative supports local schools, takes an active role in economic development, and works hard to keep costs down for its members. We exist for one purpose, to empower communities and energize life with safe and reliable energy. To learn more about how Platte Clay Electric Cooperative is working to achieve that mission, visit www.pcec.coop. Platte Clay Electric Cooperative. You may have noticed your shoulder hurting, or maybe a kink in your neck. The culprit may be looking right at you. Your phone. Think about how you use it. Does that pain feel familiar to you? Hi, I'm Dr. Mark Strathman with Kearney Family Chiropractic Center, and I've been practicing chiropractic health in Kearney for over 22 years. When you come to see me, I identify what's wrong and determine if I can help you. If I can, I create your personalized plan for relief. When you have pain, you can make an appointment by calling 816-628-6738, or you can visit the office at 301 South Platte Clay Way, Suite B in Kearney. Carney Family Chiropractic Center. Heal yourself. Welcome back to Carney Live. We have 
the sheriffs have arrived here. I so have a the, sheriff, the sheriff's office is here. So <laughs> straighten up and fly right, Brian. <laughs> okay. I'm watching you. I can see this right now. Go ahead, Jim. Well, I was just going to say, first of all, when we came back from commercial, the video with the little heart, there's a thing on um, Camo TV, if you missed it, that has oh, yeah. the history, uh, not the history, but a interview with the uh, woman who designed that. That was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And then also in the video, you saw a blue fountain. I have no idea what that was for. Why is the, <laughs> why is the water blue? For the Royals, oh, I'm sure. Please. The Royals? Just to remind Royals, us that really? they... We haven't even won ten games. Exactly. Well, don't, We're in, a in charge of that. It's Jerry. Oh. You got to talk to Jerry about that. She must be a Royals fan. You got to be a fan. So. <laughs> I, I I'll really tell you who I'm a fan of, Jim. The Clay County Sheriff's. You better believe it, Andrew Frizzell. <laughs> welcome to the show. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> My God, listen to those people, right? <laughs> It's the large crowd we have here. Right. Do you mm -hmm. find that uh, when you start your job, you drive down the road in your police cruiser and uh, just kind of cruise <laughs> down the streets of Kearney and people just start clapping for you just for no apparent reason? Every day. <laughs> <laughs> See? He's not lying. Oh, that's great. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Why are you here today, Andrew? For people ask crying me out loud, people want to know. I, I know it. Uh, actually... I do know for a fact that there were some special commendations uh, for yep, a, a handful. Uh, yeah, there's about 30 employees of the sheriff's office who got recognized at our award ceremony we had. Yeah, and uh, what what are some of the awards uh, that, that you can think of that uh, of those 30? I mean, are, are all of them sort of, you know... I think they were comprised primarily of a special accommodation and life-saving awards. Right. And uh, because I, I get the sense, I can tell right now, you, you guys are very humble. You're not going to toot your own horn about this. <laughs> but I'd kind of like to know, you're, you're one of the recipients of, of this award, of one of these awards. Uh, can, can you just tell us, in a, in just in a nutshell, what, sure. what, what you were recognized for? Sure. I received a life-saving award for uh, an incident that I responded to back in October of last year where... I happened to be, at the time the call came out, I happened to be probably about a mile, maybe a little bit less, from a location where Kansas City dispatched a shooting on the south end of Clay County in the, within the city limits of Kansas City. I responded there since I was so close, uh, with, along with another deputy. When we arrived, we located a, a victim who had been shot multiple times. Uh, we provided, you know, first aid to him, life-saving measures such as applying a tourniquet, pressure bandages, and whatnot. Mm. You, you forget... Um... I think the, the public tends to forget that these are things that you're trained to do, uh, you, and you and you see these things that are that most most of the public will will never see in their lives. Um, you, you come upon a scene like that, and uh, of course you you responded because you you heard the the, the dispatch call over the radio, correct, uh, to provide assistance for Kansas City, Missouri. Mm -hmm. But still. You, you come upon a scene like that. I mean, what goes through your mind? I mean, what's what's the first thing you're thinking of? Well, I mean, I tried to relocate the individual first, right? And I knew prior to getting there that he had sustained gunshot wounds. Um, so I immediately, you know, I kind of prepared myself in my mind about how I'm going to provide aid to him uh, when I locate him. Um, once I did, I got to my medical bag, which is my patrol car, uh, responded immediately to him, you know, checked the area because I didn't know if the shooters were still hanging around or yeah. if they had if they had left the scene i wasn't i wasn't really for right. sure yeah that's what i was wondering so, was the the threat still there yeah oh boy i didn't see them anywhere um mm -hmm. so i immediately tried to provide aid to him along with the other his deputy tyler sands who's with me mm -hmm. um you know together we were able to you know, coordinate i guess a plan to you know try to stop his bleeding and right. save his life at least as long as possible till no, ems is able to get there kansas city missouri wasn't there yet so correct, you, correct. you got there first yeah correct wow yeah. So, yeah. I mean, thankfully, you know, situations like this are not necessarily uncommon, but Clay County doesn't have a whole lot of shootings. Right. So, but, you know. Wait, d so, do we know who the suspects are yet? Uh, not yet. But, mm -hmm. And that was in October. Correct, right. yeah. Yeah, the investigation is still open and ongoing. So, you can't say a whole lot about it, but. Yeah, I, mean, I don't want to give specifics. Right, right. But, but it sort of makes you wonder, you know, would the, the victim was, you know, involved in some way. Certainly, mm -hmm. uh, perhaps. <laughs> I'll leave that open. <laughs> so. uh, wow. Well, well, I know that. I mean, the sheriff's office has released a little bit of media story about it. But essentially, what happened was he left work, and when he got up to his vehicle, he 
happened upon people who were actively stealing stuff out of his vehicle. I see. Oh. Okay. So, uh, so he wasn't in, uh, involved in the crime itself. That's correct. Yeah. I got yeah, you. Absolutely. Okay. That's what. That's where I was going. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. I like the way so. Mike is fishing. In <laughs> <laughs> well, I want some action here. You know what I mean. Yeah, right. I just, right. We don't have any pictures, so we're trying to paint a picture here. Right. That's what we do with words. Exactly. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it is, I mean, and congratulations, by the way, for, and, and I know it's all in a day's work. I, that's what you're going to tell me, right? It's what we do. Oh, absolutely tell you that. <laughs> right. I, I mean, know. it's nothing unique that any other deputy or any other one in the law enforcement nationwide wouldn't do anything different. I understand. Uh, well, we uh, just appreciate so much uh, what you guys do and for, well, let's just be honest about it, precious little pay, you know? I mean, you get into a thing like this and you say, <laughs> I mean, sometimes I have to wonder, you what I, were you thinking? This, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I didn't, this is a career choice. <laughs> I wouldn't do anything different for a career. Um, I didn't become a cop to, you know, become rich. Obviously, right. I want to be able to sustain a decent lifestyle. But mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. that 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 that's really not going to help with budget. <laughs> <laughs> I think what you meant to say was, man, we could use a little more money. <laughs> Just trying to help. Yeah. Will. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I think, you know, Will Aiken is doing everything he possibly can, and I think the citizens of Clay County did, too. I and, agree. Uh, right, so. Yeah, I worked for the sheriff's office for eight years, mm -hmm. and, you know, I mean, it's been an, an ongoing issue, but I think it's slowly getting resolved as time goes on. So well, let's, let's, yeah. let's, let's talk about let's it. Let's do. Uh, of course we are. Go to Mike for just a second. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> oh, brother. So, Brian makes his coffee that gets in my throat. But anyway. That's um, the cough button right yeah. there. There is none. Thanks so, for that, Jim. One of the, one of the things, uh, the, around here anyway, when people vote for like a, a tax levy or something like that for law enforcement, they usually do pretty well. But the one thing that um, I, it, that is really going to be a problem that you're starting to see, because if you've followed the news at all, you know that a lot of the departments are way understaffed. And the problem is it takes about a year to get someone off the street. It's not like, um, I'm going to use uh, Chick-fil-A, just a random place, <laughs> where you can hire somebody and then tomorrow they're in their work and you just can't do that in law enforcement. So you have to get them certified and the training and all that. So it takes about a year. By the time you are you go through the academy, you get do your field training program and you get all that done, and the money involved in all that, if we went through this in Kansas City, and I'd like to see it re-implemented, but where if you pay your tenured officers more, um, then you get to keep, not only do you, do you keep people longer, but you gain that experience, which when you bring in five or six or seven new guys and they're all brand new, then they have to relearn what other guys have learned over time through experience. So um, it, it, it seems, you know, it, if you – then you, you don't have to retrain all these people constantly and have this revolving door and all that. That's all I've got to say about that. But, it's, it, I mean, that's true. That's why, you know, when people sit there and go, well, they paid so-and-so hundreds of thousands of dollars, that's because they want to keep the guys, that, the guys and girls that know and have the knowledge and experience, you want to keep them in there. You don't want them rotating out the door, and you surely – um, don't want them to go to other – so what's going to happen is it's happened already, but you start to actually have departments that budget against each other because they want the qualified people. So you end up in a bidding war, so to speak, among law enforcement. But No, absolutely. I mean, we have – we hire people from other agencies. There's all, there's all kinds of incentives to work for the sheriff's office besides just salary. Right. We have – I think we have excellent benefits. Our retirement program is you know, pretty top-notch. Yeah, and departments have to, I mean, back in the 70s, for those of us who were alive, um, <laughs> you didn't have to do this. You didn't have to, but now there's all these budget incentive programs, and we'll give you a signing bonus, and we'll do this, and you get this, and you get a car that you can only drive at certain times. I mean, you can't take it to the lake. Although some guys have done that. They're no longer with the department. That's not Clay County. We don't recommend it. That was another no. department another time. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so, but it's a great it's a great job. Well, at uh, times it's agree. a great job, right? I mean, there's always days like with any any job where right. you're kind of like, man, I, I don't really feel like going to work today. But for the most part, I, mean, I enjoy my job. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think I'm in one of the best departments in the state of Missouri, and I'm in one of the best divisions in the sheriff's office. 
In which division is that? The patrol division. Yeah, <laughs> throw a little, <laughs> nice. a little throw right. out there. Yep. I wasn't going to say, so which is the worst division? <laughs> <laughs> so now, which is the worst? No, I'm just <laughs> gonna... Now, you said Not that uh, to, to begin with... <laughs> When when you started with the sheriff's office, you started over at the at the jail. Correct. I mean, that's yeah. where yeah. that's where most deputies begin their career. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah. Okay. And how's that how's that work? How long do you have to stay there? Uh, what do you do when you're there? And uh, what what training are you getting there? That's so there's that, a mm -hmm. there's in house training at the jail that you know the deputy or even a civilian detention officer would would get uh, while they're like, once they get hired. Um, and then the time that you would spend in the jail before you could transfer to another division kind of is dependent upon the circumstances at the time. Uh, I personally sit, worked in the jail for about a year before I was able. I actually went from the jail and worked in our school resource unit for a couple of years, and then I um, worked in patrol, and that's where I've been since then. I spent the majority of my career so far in patrol. Mm -hmm. And did you go to the academy then before you started yes. there? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. So you get... Obviously, you're getting police training before you just show up in a jail, and uh, I mean, you, oh, you got yeah, so, yeah right. you're you're prepared, oh, oh, oh. right? Exactly. Right, right. Here I am, and uh, <laughs> yeah. So and there's there's ongoing training that sheriff's office does every year, department wide. Right. You know, we could sp speak even specifically on um, the situation that I, I guess I'm here for initially, which is more of a medical uh, issue. Um, mm -hmm. We the whole department this year went through a tactical combat casualty course. Uh, where they talked about tourniquets and controlling bleeding for gunshot wounds and mm -hmm. a lot of that, you know, more life-threatening, you know, injuries that someone could sustain. Yeah. So we do stuff like that on an annual basis. Yeah, so that's one of the things, too, that I don't think people appreciate. So you, um, as a police officer, you, you have to train the for, chair. like, well, either. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just messing. <laughs> either or. Um, <laughs> a law enforcement official. Uh but you have to train for any number of things. So it could be medical. It can be, like, traffic accidents. It can be a shooting. It mm -hmm. can be domestic violence. It can be all sorts of stuff. And you have to be trained for all that. So when you go through the academy, you train for civil and criminal and all that sort of thing. So um, which brings up an interesting thing, a couple of things. Number one, for those who don't understand, what's the relationship? So obviously Clay County... Um, envelops some of Kansas City, but mm -hmm. it also has Kearney, Gladst or, uh, yeah, Gladstone, and all sorts of other municipalities. Right, so... How do you guys all work together? So we, obviously, the Sheriff's Office has jurisdiction anywhere in the county, whether it be in an unincorporated area or a city like Kansas City or even a city that, you know, doesn't have a police department like Randolph or, you know, Birmingham or Avondale or whatever. Um, we have jurisdiction anywhere in Clay County. Um, primarily, we only respond to calls for service, in the unincorporated sections of Clay County or in the cities that don't have a police department, although we do patrol, you know, all over. So, and then kind of, as far as working with other departments, I think we have a pretty good working relationship with a lot of other departments. We communicate frequently amongst ourselves. Yeah. Remember when, uh, I do, when Randolph had its own police department uh, yeah. and that little stretch of 210 that's just east Mm -hmm. of I-35, you mm -hmm. you had to be real careful driving through there because if you went one mile per hour over the speed limit, which I think was, what, 45? I, I don't and, uh, Now I don't worry about that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll, I'll make sure I sit down there more often. <laughs> <laughs> well, I see how uh, this is going to play uh, out. Yeah, yeah. Mosby, I, can't, Mosby, I can't even say that I know you. Mosby was the same way. They had that'd uh, be a guaranteed ticket little... if you tried to buy my hair. <laughs> <Yeah, right. laughs> Maybe you don't know who I know. <laughs> see, it's all who you know, and then over here you have favoritism. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, so can, don't speed through Randolph is what you're trying to tell me. Yeah, time, right? yeah, absolutely. The the this happy little town of Randolph, Missouri. Just, you know, Randolph the red nosed reindeer. <laughs> Sure. Right? Exactly. All right, we've got about a minute left. Well, listen, uh, anything that you can think of right now that you want the world to know, uh, and, and by the way, congratulations very much. Thank uh, you. To, uh, considerable congratulations to you, Andrew Frizzell, uh, from the Clay County Sheriff's Office. I appreciate you guys having me today. Well, it's, it's a pleasure it's... having you here, and we appreciate mm -hmm. you.
Jim. It's kind of like the Academy Awards here. The music starting in the background <laughs> and then they <laughs> shut us all down. But I the know. funny thing is. <laughs> we could keep going. Nelson's sitting over here <laughs> laughing it up, but he's next. Caleb <laughs> Nelson is coming up next. Thank you, Jim, for I, I appreciate that segue. Stay with us. You're listening to Carney Live. We'll be right back with Caleb. A special thank you going out to underwriters like these for their support of KPGZ. Simplify your banking, simplify your life. It's easy with Kearney Trust Company. Kearney Trust goes beyond convenient locations and good customer care to offer banking services that make managing your finances quicker and easier than ever before. Online, bill pay, e-statements, and mobile banking are available to give you a positive banking experience so you can get back to your life and activities. Kearney Trust also provides capital to people and businesses so they can achieve their goals. Whether you know exactly what you want or just need someone to talk to about your dream, you can speak with them and work on that dream. Kearney Trust Company is your partner for success with two convenient locations in Kearney at 310 West 92 Highway and 701 Watson Drive in Price Chopper. The phone is 816-628-6666. Carney Trust Company, banking you can trust. Member FDIC. Electric cooperatives are different. We have a sense of pride in our local community and support the people who live here. That's why Platte Clay Electric Cooperative supports local schools, takes an active role in economic development, and works hard to keep costs down for its members. We exist for one purpose, to empower communities and energize life with safe and reliable energy. To learn more about how Platte Clay Electric Cooperative is working to achieve that mission, visit www.pcec.coop. Platte Clay Electric Cooperative. You may have noticed your shoulder hurting, or maybe a kink in your neck. The culprit may be looking right at you. Your phone. Think about how you use it. Does that pain feel familiar to you? Hi, I'm Dr. Mark Strathman with Kearney Family Chiropractic Center, and I've been practicing chiropractic health in Kearney for over 22 years. When you come to see me, I identify what's wrong and determine if I can help you. If I can, I create your personalized plan for relief. When you have pain, you can make an appointment by calling 816-628-6738, or you can visit the office at 301 South Platte Clay Way, Suite B in Kearney. Carney Family Chiropractic Center. Heal yourself. Welcome back to Carney Live. I am your host, Mike Davis, along with Jim Dickerson and producer engineer Brian Watts playing all the background music and sliding levers all over the place over there. It looks like a jet pilot over there. And, you know, Jim actually is a pilot. He flies those airplanes around really fast, wins really sexy airplanes. That's what he does for a living. Yes, he but does. not a very good one. Uh, well, I but, wouldn't say that. Actually, but... You can join us today over at the happy hour at Fat Boys. That's at 3 o'clock. And, yeah, have yourself a little something to relax. You know what I mean? <laughs> Are you saying uh, I'm tense? <laughs> no, I mean, just any old buddy, yeah. Uh, we have Deputy Caleb Nelson with us here, right? Right, right here. Look at his. That's Caleb Happy right to be here. here. <laughs> we're glad you're here. And you also, Caleb, were the recipient of one of the special commendations the the 30 or so the, the 30 odd that we you know that we think there's that many right yeah so yeah. i think there was five or six i think five or six different incidents i think there was 30 deputies and detention oh, officers up total i thought we went from 30 to five i was like oh, wait no, that no, yeah, no yeah. there's five or six incidents and then i think 30 recipients of all the awards total right well um i and i want to hear you in uh you told us just a little bit off the air mm-hmm. about uh, about your not only one but two commendations uh, let's talk about both of them okay do do the do the the 
the beanbag one the second. <laughs> you want the, okay. Yeah, we'll save that one for a second. We have some educational, yeah, we want to, we want to learn a little bit about that projectile. That'll yeah, work. yeah. Yeah, so uh, I got one, a special combination for, actually been happened here in Kearney, right in front of the quick trip there on Store Drive. Uh, during K- canine training, we were heading to lunch. One of the deputies, DOS, found a vehicle stopped right in the middle of the road in the oncoming lanes there. Uh, stopped, checked it out, and it subject was having a diabetic emergency, which is, if somebody knows, the symptoms are pretty similar to a drunk, so we don't know whether they're high or mm-hmm. drunk or whether they're just having a diabetic emergency. So, uh, ended up blocking him in and had to break out a window because he was unresponsive. Oh, man. And had to call an ambulance and got him on his way. So, Yeah, and uh, the report said that the guy didn't even remember it. No, he was, yeah, the last yeah. thing he remembered was heading to Quick Trip to get a drink to bring up a sugar, and next thing he knows is an ambulance talking to not our pretty faces. So. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, uh, nicely done. And uh, again, I mean, those are the things that uh, you're prepared for on a daily basis. Every time you uh, you go on your shift, these are there's any number of things that could happen. Yep. Uh, now, there was another incident that, uh, tell us about that one. Yeah. So last October, we were heard, we talked about working with other agencies real well. We listened to most of the other agencies in Clay County on our radio. So we overheard Liberty police officers dealing with the Armed subject that was shooting at vehicles along I-35 there around 152. Uh, okay, say that again. Uh, there was a... Oh, sorry. S- somebody was yeah. shooting at vehicles. Yeah. indiscriminately shooting at passing vehicles on Interstate 35. So. Good grief. Yeah. So, okay, so all about, right. Yeah. Luckily, ahead. it was about midnight, and there wasn't a whole lot of traffic. But oh. So, naturally, went down there to help out. So, get there. We ended up, myself and Corporal Zubek and Deputy Barton, find the guy passed out in the bush. Unbeknownst to us, he's... Passed out, but laying in a bush on his stomach, we couldn't see his hands, so we started giving commands, set up perimeter, coordinate a bunch of other outside agencies, which luckily we work real well with. So, Kansas City, Pleasant Valley, Liberty, Claycomo, Iowa Patrol, everybody you could think of pretty well showed up and assisted with it, which we're grateful for because we need the perimeter there. Sure. After uh, probably half an hour, it started raining real good. It's like a, I'd say a monsoon, where I've never been so wet in my life. <laughs> so, we're dealing with that for about an hour, and he wakes up and you know, give him the commands to stop and show us your hands and, and decides not to do that because he's under the influence of alcohol and her drugs. So I end up deploying our less lethal shotgun, a beanbag round, one into his chest, and that knocked him down pretty good. And Go up there to try to take him into custody, but he decides to fight some more and had to pull the firearm off of him. And oh. luckily, luckily we had enough there that... We can overpower him because I'm kind of small. So I guess, right. I guess. <laughs> I, I want to know about the beanbag. Well, though. before that, how did you find him? No, we we just did a natural old police call along the in between church and 35 there on the west side. Mm-hmm. So we're just I kind mean, of walking, I, and I thought it was a trash bag because he's kind of hung up in a ball on his stomach. So I thought it was a trash bag, and yeah, because I'm just thinking when you get a call, somebody's shooting randomly mm-hmm. at, at vehicles. Oh, you don't man. know where they're shooting yeah. from. Yeah. yeah. So you got to figure that out. While not getting shot at. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Just a little tactical issue. <laughs> no <laughs> doubt. Yeah. All right. Now to Mike's question. Well, we yeah. I mean, this is uh, clearly, I mean, it, it is a non lethal weapon, mm. but um, as we mentioned off the air, that it it will leave a mark. Yeah. Right? So, <laughs> the, technically, it's less lethal. Yeah. Because at a close enough range, if, I, if we needed to, it could be a. If it, you it, hit somebody, because it's a canvas ball or a canvas bag, it's mm-hmm. got pellets in it. So if you hit somebody. Close enough in the right areas is going to, you know, be lethal. Yeah. So I see. So we still got to hit him in the least sensitive areas that oh, way, you know. So, so we usually aim for the lower chest or mm-hmm. legs or extremities. Yeah. That way, don't hit something sensitive. So. Wow. Uh, I mean, but yeah, it'll leave a mark for sure. Yes, no doubt about it. And uh, and you have uh, those those kinds of weapons yep. uh, at your disposal yep. at, in you know, at a time of need. Yep. Uh, I think mm-hmm. only we have. Right now, I think it's only the tech guys, mm-hmm. or SWAT guys, have them. Uh, it's just one of those things that money and budgetary constraints that I right. wish everybody had one. I wish I think most of the guys wish they would. But yeah, just one of those. That hopefully, down the road, we'll all have one. But right. So uh, now, again, you you were in coordination with a number of other local departments, yep. and uh, you had set up a perimeter in the rain, and you're. Uh, once you discovered where this guy was, you're you're all just Standing out in the rain. Yeah, pretty much. So uh, keep keeping an eye on him yeah. while you're getting wet. So and that the spot it was at, we had I had to coordinate kind of you know, block off Church Road north and south, and it's kind of kind of a pain in the butt to kind of coordinate because mm-hmm. we're 
out in the really out in the open. We had to use a couple cars, and we had to pretty much hide behind a guardrail, looking down over the guy. Mm. So luckily, we had all the different agencies to come help us with the manpower and stuff. So now I'm curious about the uh, the emergency call. I mean, uh, unless I, I guess I'm I'm assuming that maybe a vehicle was struck by a round. Then no, or, I'm or not how- sure. So I'd only heard part of it. Mm-hmm. So the way our radios work, it kind of what they call a scan. So only some agencies will come across at one time, only one at a time. Oh, I see. So me and my trainee deputy Barton at the time were just happened to be driving just north of Liberty and only caught part of it. So we kind of notified everybody else and kind of got down there. I'm mm-hmm. not sure exactly how it got come out of the first place. Right. But I know Liberty, about the time we responded, they tried to make contact with him and he'd run off. So yeah. he'd run across the north north and southbound lanes of 35. So mm-hmm. He ran across the... Yeah. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, this is you, ever so... see, you ever see Frogger? Yeah, I used to play Frogger. <laughs> yeah, that's He's pretty good at it. Same principle. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, your, your job is exciting. And uh, yeah. are, are, there, are there pockets of excitement followed by pockets of boredom throughout oh, yeah. your, your week? Yeah. <laughs> I think the, one of the biggest terms we use is, or one of the phrases we use is, you know, a good 30 seconds of incitement for six hours of paperwork afterwards. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Can, I can imagine. So but, you can be going from... Like, I think we'd come from an accident or something before that come out. The non-injury, basic, run-of-the-mill accident to right. the active shooter. So. But the uh, the adrenaline rush that you get, I can I can well imagine that uh, you don't exactly just go home and go right to sleep after yeah. a call like that. I think Corporal Fr- Frizzell can attest, I think most, most anything, you get kind of accustomed to it. So I think the first couple times, it's just like pursuit or anything else, mm-hmm. the more... You get amped up the first couple times, sure. and then after that, you kind of get where it's kind of boring. Part of the job. <laughs> this part of the job. I mean, wow. So. Yeah. Luckily, we have we have a kind of, kind of a core guy or a core group of guys that all experience a bunch of different things from different bunch of different agencies. Mm-hmm. So that kind of helps out in our favor. Where they kind of keep a cool head during stuff mm-hmm. like that. Yeah, I mean, where they actually will will say yeah. and give you instruction and and very specific things to to sort of keep keep your level headed yep. and so forth. Yeah. Wow. Uh, good to know, but uh, again, I'm I'm just, uh, you know, we are we are so grateful uh, for the folks like you and the entire uh, Clay County Sheriff's Office and uh, and other law enforcement, Carney law enforcement, and everybody that everybody that clear up the state troopers here in in this wonderful state of Missouri uh, for what you guys do, and uh, for again, <laughs> we say, you know, you you chose this career, and uh, you, you have to. Yeah. Uh, when you uh, decided to to go into law enforcement, was this uh, an, sort of an immediate decision, or is it something you thought about a long time, or what? Yeah, I'd always considered being a police officer. So I'm from Clay County originally, I'm from Smithville. Uh, I went out to Topeka for just under four years, worked out there with the intention of coming back here, but I I applied with Topeka Police Department just to get the experience of going through the process before I applied here, and actually got hired. So stayed out there, moved back for family. About four years ago now, and I've been here ever since. So yeah. this is where I wanted to be ev- eventually anyway. So mm-hmm. it just happened to work out that I'm working here and doing my dream job. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no kidding. That's so. great to hear. Uh, and again, you know, we just, we appreciate that, knowing that, uh, you know, you have, yeah, you've got benefits and all of that. And I think, uh, what is the, uh, what's the retirement age from, if, if you stayed, do you know? I mean, you're, you're so young, you're not even thinking about it. Yeah, Look I mean, at you. You've got to be here before you know I it. I probably got 60 years left. I think it was 55. <laughs> 60 years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, but but you have a pension and yeah. a plan like that that you yeah. can actually, you know, start planning for. Yeah, like Frizzell like. said, we have actually a real good inter- – mm-hmm. our benefits are real good, especially our retirement. I think we get two, two retirements. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, no, and I think that's great. Uh, in all seriousness, I mean, yeah. I think – Lots of young people are just starting out careers, and they're they're not thinking about retirement. I know yeah. I didn't, mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden, here, yeah, and and it's so. Then all of a sudden, you're like, r- oh, right, this, yeah. This is a good realization on radio. Like, yeah. oh no, when you start yeah. getting the AARP card, <laughs> yes, exactly. Suddenly, you realize how old you really are, <laughs> and um, and it so it happens quickly. It does. But, it's but, a sad thing. But to be in a in a position in a in a job a career that. Uh, uh, you know that that you really love, and it's something that you wanted to do. I think makes all the difference in the world. Yeah, it really does. So I don't think like my grandpa always told me, you're not not going to work a day in your life if you do something you love. And this is something mm-hmm. I love doing. I think Corporal Fazell loves doing, it, and I think I don't know of anybody on the road patrol that doesn't love doing their jobs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, so here's something you can do. So uh, and I know Clay County still does it. I don't know when the next one is, but 
um, you can do the Citizens Academy. And so I'm going to highly recommend that uh, because there are a lot of folks out there that, believe it or not, know everything. And if you don't believe me, get on Facebook for about three minutes. And uh, But the funny thing is about the Academy, number one, okay, just to be clear, and I know Sarah out there in the lobby would want me to clarify this, you will not be a deputy when you finish. <laughs> what? So you, you don't um, get a cruiser and you yeah, don't get a weapon. Not give you a gun. So just, yeah, yes, just calm out. down. You don't even so, get one of those beanbag guns. No, what? no, I, they may let you shoot it. Yep, you get yeah, the out there shoot you one can now. shoot it, but... So the funny thing is, so the Citizen Academy way back, even in my days, we had them. The funny thing was um, they teach you, you know, different aspects of civil law, criminal law, and that sort of thing and what the differences are. And then they, I don't know if they do this. I'm sure they still do a variety of it, but it's the funniest thing for those who teach it. They'll give you a scenario and then a what would you do, and nine times out of ten, the what would you do the people come up with in the class are illegal <laughs> because you know it's easy to sit there and watch something on the news or second guess what you did or what you did and then go well why didn't they do and then but the funny thing is when you're put in that situation and you have to make a split second decision how many people will come up with stuff that is just totally like okay well you can't do that i mean <laughs> So before you go to the Citizens Academy, and they sell out or sell out, it's free. They book really quick, yeah. and those classes fill up. I don't know when the next one is. I they just completed one. Actually, the ceremony we got our awards at was a Citizens was, Academy okay. graduation. Oh, cool. Awesome. Yeah. So I think they're going to be doing two a year now. I think they're having another one here in the fall. So I highly recommend when so, they come out with the dates, sign up for that because they go quick. And before you do that, Go watch uh, on me TV Adam Twelve for a few episodes. Get, get some stuff in the background, but no, it seriously get a hold of the sheriff's office over there and do the Citizens Academy if you can get in because it's a right. It's a, a very it's a educational ten, ten, ten week course, and uh, there if you, you can go to the uh, Facebook dot com Sheriff Clay County, and uh, you'll see some pictures they've got there, and uh, they talk about the. Uh, uh, learning everything from detention to drones to dogs to DWI. You see what they did there? That alliteration there. That's really, really very nice. And uh, they graduated. How many of them were there? How many folks were in the There were 17 this time. Wow, okay. And I see some some cool pictures here. Uh, oh, there's, I bet there, there's that shotgun right there. It's got the... Uh, it's got the orange stock yeah, on it. It's got the orange furniture orange, on it. Yeah, wow, yeah. orange furniture. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, well, very cool. Uh, again, I mean... Just uh, very exciting to to hear these things and uh, to know that that folks like yourself are out there. And I know you're you're led by uh, you know you have a great leader over there. We're we're blessed with the leader, and then we're blessed yep. with a good community to back us too. So yeah. we don't have any. I've never had any bad experiences with the community here, whereas other other communities have. So. Sure. Yeah. No. I mean, you're you're well appreciated, and uh, yeah, we. You know, I just I can't say it enough. But uh, and stay stay safe. We got uh, got about a minute or so left. Um, who's, anything who's, that you who's your leader? That Will Aiken guy? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Sheriff Will Aiken. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> now he's a guy that'll toot his horn. You know that? Will sometimes not well, really. I trained I mean, you have him. To, no, you have I, to. You have to pull. I, I did. Background. You have to pull but it out I, of it. I finally was able to get Doctor Will Aiken, yes, right. <laughs> to to tell his story. And I and I remember now he's been on the air a couple of times, and he did tell. He's got an amazing story. And for those of you who haven't heard it, uh, I'm not going to tell it now because we're about ready to go off the air, here, right, here Brian? Comes that Academy Award music. Listen to you. that. I know. <laughs> Uh, Caleb Nelson, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thanks. Yes, you bet. Thanks for everything you do. And Andrew Frizzell. Uh, next week, we've got Victor Hurlbert. I know that guy. Uh, he's really good at math. <laughs> they, 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 true. It's true, right? Yes, we'll have a math test next week. It was my understanding there would be. <laughs> I, I know. Well, I'm going to, if, if there was a guy that you're going to have or pay to take a math test for you, Victor Hurlbert would be the guy. So don't miss that next week. Thanks so much to Shani Othick with the, the executive director at the Northland Therapeutic Riding Center and both Andrew Frizzell and Caleb Nelson with the Clay County Sheriff's Office. Thanks so much for being with us. We'll see you next week on Carney Live.